Ah, Crusader Kings 3, a game where you play as a medieval king building the richest and most powerful realm in the known world. That is until the day you die. Then you have to hand over the reins to your perfect son and heir who you've been grooming to cement your dynasty's name in history. But, uh, you can't forget about those other sons you had, the less than perfect ones. Well, they just took 75% of your land in the inheritance. The next thing you know, rebellions crop up, your armies shrink, coffers dwindle, and a few short years later, the most powerful nation in the world is no more. All because you were a little silly, didn't wrap your willy, and now had too many sons. It's a tale as old as time itself. Frustrated and pissed off, most people uninstall and literally never play this game again. Except for me. I ask myself, how do I take this incredibly hard game and make it even harder? So today, my goal is simple. I'm gonna be playing until I unlock Primogenitor, the late game law which makes equal succession a thing of the past. But the catch, I'm gonna have to do it while having this special trait I modded in, making me the most fertile man in the world, literally capable of having hundreds of sons, all of whom will legally have the right to equally inherit a portion of my land. And I'm gonna have to disinherit them all before I die or else my land will explode and I'll fail the challenge. Sounds difficult, right? Well, buckle up, because to beat this 300 year challenge, each life I'm going to need to make sure I only have one single heir. Getting rid of the rest by any means necessary while retaining my power. Impossible, you say? Well, what if I told you every time I die, my stream chat is going to vote on how to make it harder by adding more obstacles, more challenges, and more fertility. And by the end, we're gonna have to resort to some rather unconventional methods to disinherit children I'm pretty sure most people have never used. Chop them off. So welcome to the legend of Fertility Man. So we begin our story on the day of my stream. Everything was set. I had a beautiful Fertility Man, ready to knock up any wife I found. But stream chat would ruin that. What's this? Somebody sent me an email with some character DNA? They wanted to submit their own DNA, and all of a sudden, instead of using my beautiful Fertility Man, I got this guy. Seriously, you guys wanna go with this guy? He kinda looks like Ben Stiller. I mean, I guess kinda the ears. Can you enhance it? Perfect match found. So Chad had chosen Ben Stiller over here and uh, how he was gonna get anybody pregnant was beyond me, but that's fine. So we started as the ruler of France. Now this is significant because that means we have five titles, including the kingdom. And when we die, these titles will split amongst our children. And good Ben here had insane fertility. Roughly speaking at this point, he had about a 25% chance of knocking up his wife every year. Meaning it was only a matter of time until we ran into trouble having a bunch of kids. Right off the bat, I knew I had to rush researching Primogenitor, and in order to do that, I always had to be increasing my research speed, which meant a lot of playing tall. So after some housekeeping, we were ready to find Ben, a nice wife. I think Catalin over here? Who is she? She's a nice Hungarian lady. Let's take a look at her. She looks good. She looks good, Catalin. Boom. She was beautiful, and soon after, we would be pregnant. This was no Ben Stiller from the movie The Watch. <laughs> I'm sterile. Hey, yo, what the f***? Marie, okay, we had our first daughter, perfect. And soon after this, we would get pregnant again and again, having three daughters in just a few years. So if you take a look at my succession, succession will split to my daughters. I would have five titles lost, but if we have one son, it'll all kind of go to our son because we have the male preference here. So I'm kind of banking on that now. But much like Ben Stiller and along came Polly, this loving relationship was soon to be utterly destroyed by my wife cheating on me with some French dude. My spy master has exposed my my wife is having an affair. My wife cheated on me with this guy, bruh. She's got a type, I guess. After this, I would find a new wife. And when choosing between the best two options, a genius lunatic and a genius lunatic, I went with the obvious choice. The lunatic shall get money. And finally, a few years later, I would be blessed with him, my first son. And this kid, uh, th this kid was interesting. And chat wanted to name him Tiny Tim. Don't ask me where that came from. I had my heart set on the Ben Stiller storyline. Joke's on them because it's my video and I can do what I want. Anyhow, I would go on to have two more sons. Now, for this life, I would simply be able to disinherit them using prestige and this rare renowned currency up here. Just like in a normal game, I was able to save up enough to tell the world these kids have no claim to my inheritance. So as it stood, I would lose no titles on succession. But renown is pretty hard to get as the game goes on. So honestly, I got lucky that 
thought if my eight kids I had this life were daughters, had I had five sons, I would be scrambling right now. But my luck was about to change because Ben Stiller here had passed on and we were now playing as Tiny Ben. See, I told ya, I'd do what I want. Like I mentioned at the beginning, this game was only gonna get harder for me. And it was chat's turn to decide how. They would squabble amongst themselves for some time, but finally decide, you know what? Catholicism was now going to have polygamy. So instead of having just one wife, I was gonna have four. Great, now four people are telling me I left my shoes in the hallway instead of just as easily putting them on the shoe rack. And instead of just having insane fertility, we would stack the deck, meaning every year I would have a 33% chance all my wives magically got pregnant. Meaning instead of having eight kids in one life, we'd have closer to 50. This was about to get interesting because there was absolutely no way I was gonna be able to disinherit 50 kids. Immediately, I linked up four wives and in the first year, he knocked them all up. Nice. I needed a plan because I could not disinherit them all. And my plan? Hand my children directly over to the Catholic Church. Nice. That never went wrong in all of history. Let's find somebody to educate my child who is humble, maybe. Okay, our half-sister here, who is humble, she is actually compassionate and fickle. So if she passes any of those traits to the Hello. son here, I can ask him to take the vows, hopefully. You see, if I was able to rig the system and see that my child grew up to be mild-mannered, you know, chaste, forgiving, content, things like that, then I could likely ask him to renounce his inheritance and become a monk. Similarly, if I could educate him to be a little rowdy, brave, vengeful, to love to fight, I could ask him to fight with the Catholic Holy Order, also renouncing his inheritance. And in the event I or the guardian I assigned to raise them couldn't raise them in either of those two ways, well, then I could always kind of just disinherit them like normal, but but at least this would be manageable and wouldn't cost me insane amounts of renown. That's how I was gonna get out of this life unscathed. But year after year, I would get our harem of wives pregnant. Oh no, there's gonna be another four kids coming. And unlike deadbeat dad Ben Stiller from Night at the Museum, I was really coming into my own as a father. Hell, I might even win father of the year. Okay. <laughs> One of our wife, no longer pregnant. Perfect, you'd love to see it. Father of the year. Okay, whew. One of our sons died during pregnancy. You'd love to see it. Father of the year. Beautiful, we had a daughter. And then we had another daughter. Thank God we had only more daughters. Father of So after 24 kids in like 15 years, I was getting a little nervous. I knew this life I was gonna have to pull out all kinds of tricks, and even then I was barely gonna make it. And the next life, chat was gonna make it even harder. Near impossible. I needed to set myself up for success, and I needed to do it fast. If we could save up our prestige, we could reform our culture, and we could get bound by faith. Only characters of the same faith can inherit. And I actually have a big brain strategy for changing the faith of people who are in line to inherit our titles. For this, I'm still missing... 6,000 prestige. So I had a plan. By hiring people at our court that gave us prestige, this currency right here given to you for being famous, and by increasing our court grandeur, we would be able to save our prestige more efficiently, then use it to reform our culture and nullify most of our kids' inheritance. In the meantime, my children began to come of age, and I asked them to become monks. Oh, 100% chance this kid will take the vows. He's shy, chaste. Let's go ahead and ask him to take the vows. A few moments later. Perfect, we got a little monkey boy. And we would continue asking kids to take the vows. But this cost 350 piety every time, and young Ben over here was not that pious of a man. This was gonna cost us way more piety with the amount of kids we had. I wound up hiring a high almoner, who was gonna give us more piety per month, but just as quick as the piety came in, I would ask more kids to take the vows and burn right through it. I was gonna need to do something else, but first, I had to make more progress on the Father of the Year award. Oh, I think one of our kids died. Perfect. And that's when it hit me. I was trying to be like Ben Stiller in Night at the Museum, when I needed to be Ben Stiller in Dodgeball. I was gonna declare war and force any sons who wouldn't join the church to fight in my army. I was then gonna take those sons and peel them off into their own division, pairing them up with the worst units imaginable, and then send them right into battle. Oh, hell no! Against an army three times their size. They were headed to almost certain death, and I was totally fine with it. 
We would end that war up one kingdom and down two sons. It was perfect. And as I neared the end of my life, I resorted to some drastic measures, and I was imprisoning all the remaining kids in our succession line. Now any smooth brain would go off and start executing them left, right, and center. You can't inherit a title if you're dead. Okay, chat, I think I'm just gonna start executing everybody and we'll deal with the tyranny later. Check, negotiate, release. Oh, that could be inter, that could be inter. Okay, so let us negotiate all these releases. Take the vows. Oh my days, you guys are geniuses. So based on my 100% totally original idea, not chats, I would begin negotiating releases and forcing people to take the vows to become monks, and I wouldn't have to worry about piety. Then with anybody under the age of 10, they can't really become monks, so I could just disinherit them. I had enough renown for just a handful of disinherits. Boom! Just like that, we went down from 44 kids to one by educating them as mild-mannered monks, murdering them in our army, imprisoning them and forcing them to be monks, and ultimately disinheriting the remaining little kids. Which was actually kind of impressive, considering our dynasty tree looked flatter than your buddy's new girlfriend who's got a great personality. Hey, I'm not judging, I'm no looker myself. And right before we would pass on, I would enact the Bound by Faith tradition, which would take like 30 years to implement, but with this, I might be able to survive whatever chat was gonna throw at me. And speaking of, here's where things get interesting. Stream chat decided that in order to make it harder, all my wives should have twins. Meaning if I had 44 kids last life, odds are now I would have 88. And there's no way I could get all those kids to take the vows consistently. So as an amateur modder, I decided it was gonna be a great idea. I could just mod this live on stream. But instead of making just my wives have twins, I made everyone in the world be a twin. Can you see the problem with this? Because my dumbass couldn't. The population grows exponentially, but if I were to double the birth rate, the curve just goes like this. The population goes insane and the game just crashes. So after ending the stream and about six hours of trying to figure out the mod, instead of having twins, I would simply multiply the number of wives I would have by two. So now there were eight people that tell me to close the closet door after I put my jacket away. And the chances I got all my wives simultaneously magically pregnant, well, I would crank that up to 50. I was going to have easily over 100 kids. I have no idea how I was going to figure it out. So we were playing as simple... Then, right away, I would link up eight wives. And immediately in the first year, I would get all eight of them pregnant. The next year, I wouldn't roll to get them all pregnant, but because I was so fertile, I would knock up four of them anyways. It had been two years and I already had 12 kids. I was way in over my head and I needed to get my plan started ASAP. Now, because we've established a bound by faith, what that does is that only characters of the same faith can inherit. So I'll go over to my court and I'll find people that I can kind of recruit or marry. For example, this woman, so I can recruit her to our court. So I'll put her in a matrilineal marriage with one of these guys, and this guy is Mesoarabic. Helicopter, helicopter. And now that he's married to her, he'll be at our court, and I'm gonna have him educate any of our sons, because our sons are the only ones in line to inherit our titles. And when I do this, I'm going to ask him to convert their faith, so these kids will become Mesoarabic. Now, most of our kids at this point were converting away, however, I then went and successfully fabricated a claim on Athens and took some land down there. Just having bowed my faith was not gonna be enough for this challenge. I was gonna need Byzantine traditions. So I'm just gonna come over here to Athens and make sure that I have my steward on promoting cultural acceptance so that we can ultimately form a hybrid culture when this gets to 40. And I was desperate for this hybrid culture. Byzantine traditions was literally a succession cheat code. And oh boy, was I about to need it. Year after year, we would get our entire harem of wives pregnant, and it was getting to be a lot. But we were in good shape, you know? Most of our kids were converting to different religions around the world, and even if they would decide to convert back, well, if you love the religion so much, why don't you marry it? So as soon as Bound by Faith kicked in, the number of heirs we had absolutely plummeted. But we were left with a problem. We were left with a lot of kids that were too young to be converted away from our faith, and too young to take the vows and become a monk. And why this is such a big problem is because we keep having like eight kids a year and I won't have enough renown to disinherit all of them. So we've finally hit 40 cultural acceptance. That means I can go ahead and form a nice hybrid culture and we are going to call it naturally the culture of Bane. By far the most beautiful thing about this culture is Byzantine tradition. You see, it allows you to castrate any of your prisoners. So much like Ben Stiller in Something About Mary, our new kids were not gonna have any balls. Ow! 
And this came at literally the perfect time. Okay, so we just got this pop-up. Know thyself. We are close to the end, but the year is 1200. So with our remaining kids, we would imprison them. And because they liked us so much, they would oblige. Am I sure? Oh, I have my reasons. And we would soon go on a rampage. There was no child if I lied that was safe. A snip here, a little snap there, perfect. We would now have our succession secured and play as wide Ben. Even after having 143 what? kids. And the Ben Stiller dynasty would absolutely cruise the remaining 25 years to research primogenitor. And that's the story of how I had over 200 kids in one playthrough and disinherited them all by living the bad boy Ben Stiller lifestyle. I've been the Ottawa Welshman. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. This video took a hell of a lot of effort. Please consider subscribing as I make my way to 100k subs. And if I don't see you, good afternoon, good evening, and good night. The Ottawa Welshman. CK3, man, I'm the king of this land. If you want renown, well, I got it. And if you like this video, I'm sure you're gonna love the one on screen right now. I handpicked it just for you. John, they probably don't know that the cousin is the mom. Tutorials played through speed runs to win. No challenge too great for the Ottawa Welshman.